Inside the Nunamit School in Anaktuvik Pass, Sunny Castillo leads a session at a small agribusiness workshop. She's teaching participants how to turn a plastic milk jug into a mini greenhouse. The Fairbanks Soil and Water Conservation District is hosting the two-day workshop to promote agriculture across the North Slope. Agribusiness is practically non-existent here, thanks to harsh growing conditions and little historical precedent. But District Coordinator Joni Scharfenberg says environmental health and food security concerns are fueling a new interest in local agriculture. And in fact, in the last couple of years, there's been agricultural interest all over the North Slope, several communities. And through our different partnerships, we've learned that. Nasagrak Rainey Hobson and her project Gardens in the Arctic inspired the workshop. In 2016, Hobson installed a high tunnel. She sells about 150 pounds of produce a year and grows nearly 100 different varieties of plants, keeping detailed notes on what works and what doesn't. She's become something of an Arctic gardening guru. Today, she's showing off her high tunnel to workshop participants. Like I grow tomatoes, they don't always ripen, Mm -hmm. but I'll grow them anyways just because you can grow tomatoes in here. It's been a hot, dry summer in the Arctic, which means cold, hardy plants like kale have suffered, but heat lovers like melons and squash have flourished. Whether a changing climate will open doors to more agriculture in the Arctic is an open question, Hobson says. There was kind of like a stableness in the first few years, and then everything kind of just went haywire into the extremes. Not only with plants and heat and heat stress and sunburn and all that kind of stuff, but also insects. We're getting fluctuations in insects population. Communities like Anaktuvik Pass rely heavily on subsistence activities, but a changing climate is impacting them too. The patterns of a massive annual caribou migration are no longer reliable. For Hobson, growing food is just one more way her community is adapting to survive, as they have in the past when they faced colonization, forced family separations, and the pressure to give up a nomadic lifestyle. Our talent and our inubacness, our nativeness, is tied to adaptability and being able to survive and even thrive in an environment because we are very adjustable. Hobson learned from elders that before the Nunamyup people settled in Anaktuvik Pass in the late 40s, much of their diet consisted of roots, berries, and leaves. She's working now to reconnect her community to plants by mixing old and new. She uses traditional plants like stinkweed as a pest repellent and adds mashu or Eskimo potatoes to recipes like basil pesto. We had thousands of years of of relationships with plants and eating plants and caring for plants and feeding plants and walking to plants. <laughs> you know, we we're very, we had this connection and we lost it when we stopped being nomadic. A search for a healthier lifestyle inspired Hobson's project initially. According to the last census, over half of Anaktuvik Pass residents reported having difficulty accessing healthy food. Vegetables in the fly-in-only community are limited, and frozen meals are often cheaper. Hobson once paid $12 for a one-pound cabbage. My goal is to to um, provide a service for my community and to make my people better, health-wise, mentally, and just give them an option that they didn't have before. Hobson gives half of what she grows away to elders and makes all-inclusive kits for families to grow gardens in their own backyards. Her model focuses on community and cultural values instead of turning a profit. And she thinks if agriculture is to take root on the North Slope, each community will need to develop a model that fits their own needs. Because when we think of farm, we always think of um, red barns and chickens and cows and straw hats and overalls. And that's not what it's going to look like up here (laughs) at all. And the few agriculture projects that have taken hold on the North Slope are anything but traditional. A small outdoor garden in Ukiavik grown in coolers, a greenhouse on the tundra, and a handful of hydroponics projects. One of my goals is to have more of me. I want there to be like 30 of rainy, weird rainy agriculture people. I want 30 of rainy (laughs) all across the slope so it's not just me, you know, the go-to person at this point. You know, I want it to be normal. Until then, She'll keep experimenting. I've been trying to figure out what's eating them. 
she's already planning a second high tunnel. Yeah. Little cucumbers. A non-activic pass, I'm Erin McKinstry.